Hello there, I'm Greg and this is Midnight Oil Software where I talk about digital art and game development using Unity. Today I'm going to be talking about some testing feedback that I received from my Cosmic Space Fortress game. I've got this game up on Test Flight in the Apple App Store and I've invited a few friends to test it and I've also put it up on itch.io for some testing as well and I've gotten some pretty constructive feedback from my testers that I want to address today. Most of these are just minor cosmetic things, um, but I thought it would be useful to show a tutorial about how you can address feedback that you get from your testers. So this is the uh, project here in Unity. And the first thing I want to address is, I'll, I'll demonstrate the game very quickly. You've got a um, base in the middle of the scene. This is based on the old classic arcade game, uh, Star Castle. So this main cannon in the base is tracking the player's ship and it's going to shoot a projectile out as you can see there. And it's also, there's also uh, missile launchers around the perimeter that are launching missiles. So the first piece of feedback that I want to address is that projectile that just shot out and hit the player's ship. A number of people have commented that it's difficult to see, especially on the iPhone. So I'm going to address that issue first. So if I go into my prefabs and go under enemy, you'll see I've got this prefab here called enemy projectile. And I'm using a sprite here and it has a color and that color is very similar to the space background here to this nebulosity, nebulosity that you see in the, that's easy for you to say, um, nebulosity that you see in the background. So I'm going to, first of all, change that color to be something a little more visible. The other thing that I did to try to address the visibility in the uh, earlier was I added a little bit of a shimmer effect. And the way that I did that is I have it oscillate between two different colors. So this one was basically the same as that base color here, which I'll go ahead and copy. And I'm going to reuse that here. Uh, but then the other thing I want to do, I want to take that same color. Well, actually, I'm going to go a little bit brighter than that. So I want to have it kind of go back and forth between that color and a very bright, almost white color with a little bit of a green tint. So let's see what that looks like. I think that stands out quite a bit better. And I might even bump up the size of that projectile just a tad. That's certainly a lot more visible. And the only other thing I was thinking of trying, and this is just an experiment. Well, it's already got a trail renderer, doesn't it? I was thinking of adding a trail renderer, but it's already got one. Let me just see what that looks like. I'm not even sure I noticed the trail renderer on the projectile. It's there, it's just very subtle. Well, I think that's good enough for that issue from now. I'll see what my testers think of that. The second issue, the piece of uh, feedback that I got was it seemed weird to my, to one tester in particular, um, the way you bounce off the barrier. So I kind of made this game a cross between Star Castle and Omega Race. I don't know if you've ever played Omega Race, but it has a barrier. It's like you're in an arena and you're bouncing off the edges. And I have a physics material on that barrier 
and you see how it spins the ship around if you hit it at, at the right angle. They thought that that was a little difficult. It really messed with the control of the ship. So I think what I'm going to try and do there, I'm going to go up here to environment barrier. And so on my collider here, I've got this physics material that I created called barrier wall. And if we open that up, you see the bounciness is set to one. So I think I'm going to just reduce that to something like 0.2. So you'll still bounce a little bit, but it shouldn't be anywhere near as, as drastic as what we just saw. Yeah, so it, it it messes with you a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that better. <clears throat> so again, we'll see what the testers think about that. So that's two issues. The third issue was around the fact that it gets kind of boring after... Every time you destroy the station, it repeats. And it does get more difficult every time because the rate of fire for the enemy and the speed of their projectiles increases. Um, but other than that, it's exactly the same. So if you think of it in terms of levels, every level is exactly the same. And so one tester in particular said that it got kind of boring. So I think one thing I can do to try to improve that is to have the background change every level. So right now I have a single background game object and I've got different layers. I've got the star field, some dust clouds, a star and a planet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new empty game object and I'm going to call this backgrounds and I'm going to move this up here at the top and I'm going to drag this background into it. And I'm going to create a script, put it under environment. I've actually started work on this already. And so the script is pretty simple. I have a collection of backgrounds. They're just a list of game objects and I have an index into that collection. And on awake, I get all the backgrounds from the the transform. So these are all children of this parent background object. So let me go ahead and assign that. We've got this backgrounds. We're going to take this background manager, drag it on there. So it's going to get all the child background objects. And I'd like to get your opinion on something. So this is a link statement. I'm using link to get all of the child transforms and get their game objects converted to a list. Now, another way that I could do this is I could say the backgrounds equals new. And then I could say for each um, transform child in transform backgrounds dot add child dot game object. Now this is very readable to me and this is a very small script. I mean the advantage of the link statement is this is all just one line. But I kind of feel like we can be a little too clever sometimes. And it might not be extremely clear what this is doing. So I would like to get people's opinion. If you would prefer the link statement, um, drop a comment on the video and let me know. If you prefer this more verbose code, again, drop me a comment and let me know. I'm just curious to see what people think. I'm going to put this back. So when this is enabled, 
I start out with the very first background. I call this enable current background method. And all it does is it iterates through every one and then sets the game object to be active if the index we're on is equal to our current background. And then the other thing I'm doing is I'm subscribing to the on, gate state, on game state changed event from our game manager. And so every time you destroy the station, I'm gonna increment our background. And then if you go beyond the maximum number of backgrounds, we'll reset it back to zero. And currently I only have one background. Um, and then uh, if we're starting a countdown for the new level, I enable the current background. So it's a very simple script. It just sits on that background game object. But in order to see this in action, we need to create a new background. So let's create another empty game object. And we'll call this background two. And I have some really cool assets. I am using a free asset pack that I got off the um, asset store. And I can add a link to this in the description. I probably should have done that when I scheduled the stream. Uh, I might have already done that actually. But one thing I want to do is I want to grab, let's see, I've got background. So there's a bunch of just generic backgrounds here. And then you see there's this fantasy purple and I'm using in here, uh, which one am I using in here? I'm using this background for the first background. I think I'm going to try something different. Like uh, maybe... That looks kind of like the Milky Way, doesn't it? I think that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to drag it into here. I'm going to set it to the background layer and I'm going to have to make it bigger. And let me just go ahead and turn this one off. Okay, so that looks kind of cool. All right, and then I'm going to add something else just for decorative purposes. So under dust and materials, maybe this little nebula here would look pretty cool. Set that to background. Put it in front of the star field. Ooh. Yeah, I think that looks sweet. Um... Let me see how that looks. I might want to resize that. Of course, it's going to pick the first one. So let me blow this station up real quick. And to make that easy, I'm going to enable my quad turrets. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me fly around. Yeah. Now I am going to add some parallax, um, which will add a little bit of depth to that, but I think that looks pretty good. Okay, what else do I want to add? Um, a star. So if I go in here under stars, I've already got a main sequence. Let's add a dwarf to this one. I will set that to background layer, make that in front of the nebula and Let's position that up there somewhere. Actually, maybe I'll put it up in the corner like so. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to add a planet. So, man, we've got a lot of different choices for planets. I'm using an Earth-like planet, a small Earth-like planet um, for the first background. Let's pick, let's pick this barren planet. 
set that to the background layer. Put it in front. Ooh, that's huge. Okay, time to add parallax. I'm going to pick all four of those. I'm going to go to my scripts folder. Um, and under environment, um, parallax layer. And then we want this one to barely have any parallax. We want this one to have a little bit more. A little bit more and a little bit more. Let's see what that looks like. Once again, set my quad cannons. Blow that sucker up. Ooh. Okay, let's see. So I got a little bit of parallax going on now. That is super cool. I like that. All right. I think I'm going to leave that for now. And now, as you can see, all I have to do if I want more backgrounds is just create a new background object, add whatever elements I want to it, throw the parallax script on them, and the script will automatically pick them up and iterate through them. And so I have some level design to do in my future here. Um, the other thing I want to look at, this, this asset pack that I'm using, this 2D space kit, in addition to backgrounds and, and stuff, there are also ships. So wouldn't it be cool if maybe I have a cruiser fly by? I don't know. That just seems like that would be kind of cool. Just kind of, ooh, 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 a carrier. A lot of options here. I like that cruiser. So, I mean, it's just going to be for scenic purposes. So I could put it under environment. And so maybe on background two, I'll drag this cruiser, oops, onto here. I will set this to background. Maybe I'll rotate it 90 degrees, negative 90. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. I want it to kind of appear in the distance. Ooh, I could even put it behind the planet. Nah, put it in front of the planet. So I'm gonna start this guy off the screen. Oops, wrong guy. Start this guy off the screen. So I want him to go from negative 25 to 25. Or yeah, that'll work. Or maybe, you know, start negative 30 to 25. So I'm gonna put a script on him. Let's go back into our environments folder, create C-sharp script, and I'm gonna call it 
background. Object mover. <laughs> Gonna refactor this, move it to a namespace. And let's see, I'm gonna wanna have a start position. And I'm going to use do tween. So I'm going to say transform dot do move. So we want to move to in position. over, oh, we need a duration. Let's say we want to move kind of slow, take 10 seconds. And I need to make these serialized fields. I should have a move back. I should start a sequence. Well, maybe I won't do that. For now, we'll just keep this simple. I was thinking I'd have them flip around and come back. I could just have it start over again. Uh, but this, this would be sufficient. He's gonna fly across the screen. The only other thing I wanna do is I want to set ID get instance ID and then in on disable I want to kill that tween yeah so let's go back into our ship here and go ahead and add this script and see what happens I'm going to enable my quad cannons blow up that space station Now, I can already tell that that's going to freak out 
the player because they're well they're gonna try and shoot it <laughs> or they might be afraid it's gonna shoot them I think first of all I don't want it to be on at one on the y-axis Maybe I'm fly across the top. So five on the Y axis. And I want this to go a lot slower. That may be too slow. Yeah, that's probably too slow. Ooh, asteroid. Where is that guy? I think I need to disable maximize on play so I can see the scene view. see him he's just taking a long time to get into view yeah that I think it was a cool idea but it just looks like I should be able to interact with it I wonder if I made it smaller. And start him a little bit closer. I don't know. We'll see what the testers think. If you have an opinion, <laughs> leave a comment in the chat. Let me know what you think. Is that, does it seem like it's really odd that that thing flies across the screen and you can't shoot it uh, and it can't shoot you and you can't crash into it? Um, yeah, I just don't know. Um, it seemed like a really cool idea to me. But it did look kind of odd. All right. Well, I think that will wrap it up for today's stream. I addressed a few issues that I got from my testers. And by the way, do me a favor. Click that like and subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. And it really helps me out to get this information in front of as many people as I can. And click that notification bell so you can be alerted the next time I go live or the next time I post a video. So if you found this inf uh, information helpful, drop me a comment in the uh, video. And if you have any questions or suggestions, 
again, leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to it as soon as I can. And also, um, yeah, if there's any ideas for anything you'd like to see me cover in the future, uh, any specific topics, uh, I like to do uh, tutorials uh, in addition to live streams. If you'd rather see more short uh, tutorials as opposed to uh, live stream ad hoc game development, uh, let me know that too. I really want this channel to be of the most use to uh, Unity game developers as it can be. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.